uh, when they uh, defined it with a negative, notice how the integral worked itself out. It worked itself out so that if you have a positive charge, the potential closer to the positive charge is higher, right? It's a higher potential. And uh, if you go farther away from it, it's a lower potential, which is kind of makes sense because positive charge, the equivalent to a positive charge is all on, in the gravitational sense would be like a hill, like a mountain, you know? So the gravitational equivalent of a positive charge is like a mountain. The gravitational equivalent of a negative charge is like a little valley, right? So if you have a positive charge, it's like gravitational equivalent is a mountain. And so the height around it decreases, right, as you go away from it. So if I draw equal potential heights, right, little circles, if I go closer to it, the height increases, and if I go far, farther away from it, the height decreases. And if I have a dipole charge, with, which we did in the lab, right, the dipole charge negative Q, that would be equivalent to a valley. And so as you go to the valley, the height should be decreasing. As a matter of fact, the height should go negative, right? So it was good that they put the negative in the integral, in the definition, because it worked itself out so that positive charge has higher voltage closer to it. And if I, if I do the opposite, what's going to happen? If, I, if the charge is negative, and I put negative, what's going to happen? It should work out the other way, right? V2 minus V1. Let's say the charge was negative 1 nanocoulomb. Then uh, it should work itself out so that V2 minus V1 should be positive 4.5. which means v, uh, V2 should be greater than V1 by 4.5 volts. So if I have a negative 1 uh, nanocoulomb and I'm 1 meter away from it versus uh, 2 meters away, whatever potential this is, let's say this is uh, 15 volts, Two meters away, what is it going to be? Four and a half more. Nineteen and a half volts. Right? So, um, the potential near a negative charge is going to be lower than the potential near uh, away from it. Which is to say, as you get near the center of a valley, the heights get lower and lower, right? As you go away from the valley, the height gets higher and higher. So the negative, uh, I'm trying to show you from this where the negative takes us. The negative causes the, the potential difference to work itself out so that potential near a negative charge is lower than the potential near a, uh, away from it, okay? Another thing that happens as well is that um, Let's say I want to find the potential between R2 and R3, 2 meters and 3 meters. So that I could apply the same rule, and I'll go V2 minus V1 is equal to 9 over. Now, R, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to find the potential difference between 3 and 2. So let's do 3 and 2, V3 minus V2, right? Then I'm going to put here... Instead of R2, I'm going to put R3, right? So I'm going to have 3 meters. And then instead of R1, I'm going to put R2, which is 2 meters. So V3 minus V2 is going to be what? Uh, 18 minus 27. So again, uh, let's see. 18 minus 27, that's uh, negative 9 over 6. So negative 3 halves, so negative 1 and a half. Volt. So which means V2, if I take V2 over here, V2 
is uh, greater than V3 by one and a half volts. So if I keep the same pattern, three meters away, it's going to be what? If this is 19 and a half, this is going to be 15. And then three meters away, it's going to be well, one and a half volt less than this, right? Which is what? 13 and a half volts. Notice that the potential difference between this and this is greater than the potential difference between here and here, which is equivalent to saying that when you, when you go up a mountain, right? Let's say you have a mountain here. <laughs> which part of the mountain is the hardest to climb, right? The top, right? It gets steeper. Well, same thing here. The potential difference between two uh, points that are closer to the charge is much greater, four and a half volts, than this is one and a half volt. And if I go to four meters, it's going to be even less than one and a half volt difference. So maybe uh, one volt or less than one volt. So it's going to be maybe 12, 12 volts or something. No, 12 and a half volts or something. And then I'll go one more meter. Again, it drops down and it drops down and so on, so on, you see. Um, so now, uh, that's going to be similar to this, you see. So if, I have, if I'm at a certain distance away from the center, all right, and if I go about half that distance, then I go half that distance, the difference here should be less. Right? That this distance should be less than this distance. That's the same idea. And another thing, if I put a ball over here, it should speed up, right? The ball should go down the hill. It should speed up more from here to here than from here to here. So if it has, uh, let's say, uh, two meters per second, from here to here, let's say it goes to uh, six meters per second. And if the ball ends up here, it goes to, it shouldn't go to, the, to uh, 10 meters per second now, right? It should go a little less, so which is, uh, let's say, 9 meters per second, or maybe 8 meters per second. You see? So the change in velocity should go down. Well, there should be the equivalent electrical counterpart of that. If I put a positive charge here, what should happen? Let's say a little positive Q. Does the positive want to go towards the one nano coulomb, or does it want to go away from the one nano coulomb? Go away, right? The, uh, the force, the two positives repel each other. So this guy's going to say, like, I get out of here, OK? So this guy is going to say, let's say you put it right there. It's going to speed up. From here to here, it's going to speed up quite a bit. It's going to lose potential energy. And it's going to uh, gain kinetic energy. So from here to here, it gains, uh, the speed is more greater difference of speed. By the time it goes to here, less difference of speed. So let's say from here to here, it gains, um, let's say, uh, 10 meters per second. And then by the time it goes over here, you get to uh, 16 meters per second. By the time it goes to over here, so each increment so from here to here is 10, from here to here is 16, the increment is 6, from here to here maybe 20 meter per second. You see? So I'm trying to show you that this idea of potential is really nothing new, but it's the idea of potential energy from gravity applied to electricity. You see? OK, now let's talk about something known as uh, equipotential lines or equipotential surfaces. Equipotential surfaces or lines. <clears throat> 